Okay, to make a NAND appliance, the first thing you do is clean the flash of stone off of the bands, because this is where you're going to solder the wire to. So you want to clean any stone off of there. You do that with a little sharp instrument, you just get in here and it flicks right away. Don't remove any of this that's the gingiva uh, represented in stone. Next, you want to remove what are called little blebs. So these are little bubbles, not the rugae, not the natural normal anatomy of the roof of the mouth, but these little bubbles that are clearly bubbles uh, that showed up when you took the impression. So when you remove these, you want to be very, very gentle. I put my thumb in here to, so that I don't go too far and take stone off that I don't want to. I just put a little bit of pressure on I put my thumb here to counteract it so it doesn't go too far. I just push down gently and you scrape it away very slightly. Err on the side of not taking too much off, okay? Some people don't even remove these because the last thing you want to do is remove too much stone and then you have an inclusion or like a bump on the acrylic, I'll show you later, that will push in on the roof of the mouth and end up causing an ulcer. So you don't want to do that. Don't take off too much stone, but you can reduce. If you know that it's just a little bubble, um, you can gently, gently remove a portion of it. The idea being you want the acrylic to sit intimately on the roof of the mouth that is the normal anatomy. And these little blebs prevent that from happening. So be very gentle. Remove just in the anterior palate right here any little blebs that are there. After you've removed any blebs that are on the roof of the mouth right here in the anterior part of the palate. And again, I can't stress enough, do not remove natural anatomy. Don't remove these natural rugae or wrinkles on the roof of the mouth. Don't remove this ridge, anything like that. Just take away the little bubbles that are extra. So immediately after you do that, this is extremely important, right away put all coat on there. And so you just put a bit on there, don't be terribly shy, and then you spread it around with your finger. And you want to put all coat wherever you're going to make the the little acrylic button of the uh, Nance appliance. Because what this does is it provides like a little barrier between the acrylic and the stone. If you do not put the all coat on here well enough, or you forget, the acrylic will stick to the stone and then taking the Nance appliance off of here is very difficult and it ends up pulling stone away with it and then you have to pick the stone out of the acrylic, it is horrible. So that's why first thing I do is put all coat on the cast, that way you know it's done and you won't forget. You'll forget once and then after that you will learn your lesson because it is the worst. So just put it on at the beginning and then you know it's done and you don't have to worry about it ever again. Next you'll take a piece of wire. <clears throat> this is 036 lab wire and take about this much, so I'll overlap the molars, maybe a half an inch or so, maybe an inch, and that should be plenty. Then you take this wire and right in the center you take an arch forming plier, which is this kind of plier, right here, it looks like a little smiley face. You grab it right in the center and then you start to bend the wire. So I just clamp down, move it to the left, now I'll grab the wire with my fingers like this and I'll rest this finger on the plier because you want to stay nice and steady and you want to keep this wire perfectly perpendicular perfect, perfectly perpendicular to the plier so you don't want it here like this. If you do that the wire will bend in like a skewed way. If you keep it perfectly perpendicular so that this makes a 90 degree angle then both legs of this U end up being nice and level with the way you want them. So just pinch it with your index finger and thumb, rest your middle finger on the plier, and that will help you keep it nice and perpendicular as you go. So you clamp it down, move it to the left a little bit, clamp again, move it to the left a little bit, clamp again. Then I go back to the right so you keep this centered. If you just go to the left, then you end up with the bow over here and this leg's too short. So you go left a while and then right a while in that same way. Uh, with this until you form a nice little U-shape. And if you keep things nice and perpendicular on that plier, 
then when you look at this it should be fairly level. That's pretty close. If you need to adjust it, you can. You just put your fingers in here and you tweak it a little bit, but you want it nice and level like that. So then you bring this in here, you'll hold this up against the roof of the mouth. You want to put this wire about halfway between, so here's the flat roof of the mouth and then here's the vertical part. You do not want the acrylic to go below this connection between the two. So you want to keep the acrylic right here in the middle of this vertical part. So that means you put this wire right here in the middle of that because you want some acrylic above and some below that wire. So you put this wire about here in the middle of the vertical portion, not up here high, not way down here down low, right in the middle. And so I hold that in there with my thumb, or with my finger, pardon me, and I want to get this so that these two legs right here are widthwise about right. So right now they're a little narrow as you can see. And you want this part to match the anatomy of that. So if this is broad and flat, you want the wire to be broad and flat. If this is really narrow and sh tapered and sharp, you want the wire to be narrowed and tapered and sharp so it matches the anatomy of the roof of the mouth and fits up here pretty flush along both sides. So this is a little bit narrow here, so I'm just going to grab it with my fingers, widen it out very gently, very gently, and then every time I put it in the roof of the mouth to re try it in or size it, I hold it right in the same spot every time um, with my finger. Because if you just hold it here and then you get to looking and you're not holding it in place, this will drift around and it's not very accurate. So I hold this in there, and then that is looking pretty good widthwise now. So what I do is I mark this with a marker. So I get a Sharpie, and I want to mark the place right here where I want this, it's coming up, and then I want it to come flat, level with the top of that band. So I'm going to mark the wire about where I want to put that bend, right there, and on this other side, eh, here-ish. So that gives me a mark, and I've held it on the roof of the mouth about where I want it. Now I'm going to check and make sure that that's accurate before I go putting bends in. Okay, that's looking pretty good. It's looking a little narrow still, so I'm going to broaden that out just a touch. Okay. So now I'm going to take a three prong and put a little bend in here. So I'm going to put this three prong on here at an angle, meaning not flat, not flat down like this, because I want this wire to end up coming in like this and down like this. So I'm going to make a, what's called a compound bend, so two bends at once, by putting this on there at a little bit of an angle like this. So then when I bend it, it bends in and down at the same time, very gently, Boop. just a little bit. So just a little. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And then I'm going to check it. So it's looking pretty close. It could come in a little bit, so I'm going to grab it and bend it just in. Same thing on the other side. I'm going to bend it in a little bit. And I remember, I always hold it on the roof of the mouth with my index finger like this so that it stays repeatable. Okay, this side's looking pretty good. This side I went too far in. So I'm going to bend that back out just a little bit. Okay, so now both of those are looking pretty close. So now I'm going to cut off the excess. So I just basically look at it and I think I want a couple of millimeters there. So I just grab it with the snippers and just kind of estimate the length. You don't want it too short. You can always cut more off, but you can't put it back once it's cut. So I just point this at the garbage can so the wire shoots in there and it stays and that way it's not flying around and cluttering up the room or it doesn't come flying back and hit you in the eye or anything like that. 
Now that I've gotten the wire to fit accurately on the cast where I want it, I take this grinding wheel and I just polish these sharp edges where I trimmed. If you do this now, uh, your finishing work at the end is a lot better. If you don't do that, these sharp little ends can stick through the solder and be sharp and you have to do it at the end. This way it's smooth all the way through the process. So just a little gentle polishing on the end and I taper this part so again you don't have a sharp angle sticking through the solder. Just a little polishing. And then I'll also take this and very gently buff off that sharpie mark. And that's just one less contaminant very gently though so you don't remove hardly any of that metal. And that's just one less contaminant when I go to solder that'll prevent the solder from sticking. Next I take a very small piece of play-doh, just get it nice and soft, make sure the cast doesn't have any dust on it, and I stick this about where I want that wire to sit. And then I just use that to hold the wire in place for soldering. So I get it kind of lined up, I mush the wire into the play-doh so it stays put, and I make sure that it's right about where I want it, and then I line up these on the on the uh, bands where I want them to be. So sometimes you gotta play with the play-doh to get them to hold it in the right position. And then you get that nice in position so it just holds passively in place. Some people will want to tack weld these into place. Don't do that. You want this to be very passive and just sitting there without any force on it because that way you know the appliance is going to be passive. If you tack weld it and then you got to pull this over and tack weld it, now it's been pulled and fixed into place. So when you put it in the patient's mouth, it'll pull the teeth to where it's passive. If you build it passive, it goes in nice and passive and doesn't move the patient's teeth, and that's what you want. So that's why this Play-Doh method is great. It holds these into place passively for you to solder them. Okay, to solder the wire onto these bands, you need the following things. You need flux with a, flux with a little brush to apply it. You need solder right here. You need a torch, which this is a professional lab torch and you need a little uh, pedestal of stone to set this on. Do not solder the cast sitting on the countertop or the heat will burn the countertop and make a bunch of smoke and fire and ruin the countertop. And then you need something to light the torch. In this case it's going to be a sparker like this. Okay, to light this professional lab torch, first you turn on the gas from the source, which is right here. So this in line with the pipe means that the gas is turned on and can flow. This, where it's 90 degrees to the pipe, means that it's like a gate shutting, and that shuts off. So you want to make sure that's nice and parallel with the pipe. The red is the gas line, and the green is the air line. So first, you want to turn on the gas, and it's lefty, loosey, righty, tidy. So turn on the gas, you can hear it start to flow, and then you use a sparker, and that lights the flame up. So you turn the gas on nice and high, not crazy high, but enough and the flames may be 8 or 10 inches high. And then you gently turn on some air and it will start, you'll hear it start to make that whooshing sound. So you want to turn the air up as, until you hear that whooshing sound and then you turn down the gas gently and that flame should become like that. So it should be, it's hard to see with the light behind it, but it should be a, like a flame shape, like a cone or a spike, and it should make that hissing sound. My hand for reference there, with some backdrop, so you can see that flame. It should be a nice blue flame. The hottest part of the flame is the tip of that blue flame right there. That's what you want to use to solder. I forgot to mention you also want a little paper towel, just a piece about this size, that you can fold up into a neat little square about like that and then you get this wet. Okay, before you solder you want to apply the flux. So you take the flux here on this little brush and then you want to put flux wherever you want solder to stick. And you just apply it like this with the little brush and you just paint it on. You don't want to gob it on crazy heavy but you want to make sure there's flux everywhere that you want that solder to stick. 
what this flux does is it helps clean off the surface of the metal and helps the solder stick to the metal. So you want this anywhere you want that solder to stick, which is all along the side of the band and on the wire, so that the two get bonded together with the solder. And you apply that to both sides. Okay, after you've applied the flux on both sides, you get your flame in here. Now remember, the hottest part of the flame is the tip of that blue flame. So that's about what you want to use to heat this up. Now the band has stone behind it, which will absorb some of the heat. So you want to focus, whereas the wire does not. So the wire is going to heat up faster than the band. So I'm going to focus my flame kind of back here, mostly on the band, but the, the wire will heat up also just because it's in the area. So I'm going to heat this up first and then get my flux in there because the flux melts fastest of all, or it heats up fastest of all. So I'm going to get this area hot and then I'm going to put my flux in there and then when it's hot it should flow on there nicely. If I put them all in first, all in together at the same time, the solder will start to melt and you'll get a big ball of solder on the end of this. Uh, and by the time this is hot enough for that solder to stick to it and flow on there, you'll have a giant ball of solder, and then you'll have too much solder on here. So first I heat up the band and the wire, then I get the, wire, the solder in there so that only the solder that I want will melt and flow off and stick things together, and I can get this out of the way without a giant gob of solder. So we'll see how this works. So first I put my flame in there, and I start to heat things up. And then I'd introduce my solder. And if everything goes great, you'll see that solder starting to melt. Now it's not sticking. See how it went and stuck? Because it got hot enough for it to stick. So I'm putting some solder on there. Then I heat things up, and you'll see it kind of flow into place. See that? Bam. Beautiful. OK. Now I'll do the same thing to the other side. Now this wet paper towel, it's acting as kind of a heat shield so that the rest of that wire doesn't heat up too much. You don't want that wire to get hot. If that wire gets red hot and turns black, then it turns dead soft. And when they, the kid grabs the thing with their finger and pulls down, it'll bend right there because that wire is weak because you heated it up too much. So you want to try to heat that wire up as little as possible. Just barely hot enough for the solder to stick and no more. So same thing, I'm going to get this area hot, and then I'm going to get my solder in there. And hopefully this metal will be hot enough, and it will just flow right on. You'll see that metal starting to get dark. That means that it's hot. So I put that on there, and you'll see it kind of flow into place. There we go, bam. Okay, and that's soldering it on. So after you've soldered, the next step is to run a little bit of water over these to cool them down so that they don't burn you, and then we remove this um, bit of Play-Doh. So to remove it, I'll just take a little instrument. Again, you don't want to gouge or carve the stone. So you just gently remove it like that, you just roll it back, and then throw this away because it, it's cheap and you don't want it to get gungy and nasty in there. So I'll kind of tease this out. You want to get all of it out from under that wire. So those first big bits come easy, and then you'll gently reach up here and kind of grab these other little pieces. And then oftentimes what I'll do is I'll run it under some gentle water and take the, a toothbrush, not a lab brush, but just a normal toothbrush, like from the patient uh, brushing area, and running it under the water, I'll very gently scrub this away, very gently. If you go to scrubbing it like a maniac, you'll scrub off that all coat, and then uh, the acrylic will stick to the stone because you rubbed off all the all coat. But a little bit of gentle wiping with a toothbrush bristles very gently can take off this kind of pink residue. So after you've run it under the water and taken a toothbrush to clean under the wire to get all of the Play-Doh out of there, this will be all wet from being run under the water, so you want to air dry it. So there's a little air syringe, like right here, looks like this. And you can dry this off really good so it's nice and dry. So the next step is making the acrylic. The acrylic is made with two ingredients, liquid, which is called monomer, and this powder, which is called polymer. So what you want to do is you want to use the monomer first 
to get things wet and then you'll sprinkle some of the powder, some of the polymer on there and then you add some more liquid and then a little more powder, a little more liquid, a little more powder till you make the thing that you want to make. So it goes like this. So you want to get what you want to start right up here underneath this wire. So you just squeeze the bottle gently and you want to put not crazy amount, two, three drops. And then you grab the liquid, or pardon me, the, the powder, the polymer, and you just sprinkle it in there. See how it's getting dry and white? Now that means you need more liquid. So you put a couple more drops of monomer or the liquid and then a little bit more of the powder until the powder stops soaking up the liquid then you add a little more liquid now you want to do this in gentle steps like this if you put on a, a mountain of powder and then try to wet it it won't wet all the way through and you'll end up with a terrible terrible acrylic that's not well made um, you'll have voids in it so a little more liquid so and then you start in the middle and then you kind of work your way out. You don't want to build this up super thick, so you want it just to cover the wire. And then you'll move kind of laterally. So I'll wet this with some monomer. And then I'm going to start to add kind of out here toward the edges a little bit. And down on the roof of the mouth some. and just keep it kind of wet as you go. Now again, less is more. You don't want this thing a foot thick. So once it covers the wire, try to move laterally and not thickness wise, not make it thicker. You want it thick enough to cover the wire and encase the wire in the acrylic, but you don't want it to be, you know, a quarter inch thick. and just keep it nice and wet as you go and then when you're toward the end you kinda make it so it's not super wet so you want this pad of acrylic to be about the size between like a dime and a nickel think about the size of a nickel so I'm gonna add a little bit up here on the top make that just a little bit higher and try not to touch the tip into the acrylic or it clogs so just try to drop the drops onto uh, the acrylic and not touch it I'm just going to add a little bit more up there so then what I'll do is it's pretty wet right now so I'm going to add a little bit of powder to kind of soak up some of that liquid there we go and then I'll take my finger and I'll just kind of gently shape it by just tapping it into place. And that helps that powder kind of soak up that liquid too. Now what I'm doing is I'm kind of shaping it very gently with my finger and making it so it's not so thick in the middle. So I'm not pushing hard, just very gently tapping it. And that helps shape it and get the depth that I want. And then what I do is I take a little instrument. Anything that's small and sharp will do. This is the broken end of a scaler and I'll go in here and I'll shape this now. It's easier to shape now than after uh, it hardens. And so again, I want it to be about the size of a nickel, roughly speaking. So I keep this at an angle like this, not like that, because I want the edge to taper off of the gum tissue like this. I don't want a great big ledge that I then have to adjust later. And so I'll usually just kind of pinch this in my finger there to take that extra off. And then I just go around and gently shape this and I take this extra kind of flash off as I go. If you leave it there it ends up still sticking back together somehow magically and it's still a big mess to clean up later. So if you just completely remove it that's not a problem and I just grab it by my finger there. So I'm just trying to get the basic shape down that I'm looking for, kind of reach under that wire gently. And again, this part down here, you don't want the acrylic to be on the flat part of the roof of the mouth or near that junction. If you make it down near that junction, 
then it can start to, if they push up on it, it'll bite into the tissue there. If you get it into where the flat part and the vertical part meet, and it can cause a, a big old infection and it's no good. So you just keep it away from where this flat part and the vertical part meet. So I'm going to raise this up just a teeny bit. So that is not an issue for the patient. Okay, so then that's about what I want to do, and then that's about the size I want it. And then I gently push down the edges very gently with my finger, because if you're shaping it, it might pull up slightly from the cast. You don't want that. So it's still soft, and I just very gently kind of tuck those edges all down so it fits really nicely on the tissue. And then I put it in the patient's box with their lab slip right here attached to it. I take this little pedestal that I used for soldering and I lean it up against there so that that acrylic is sitting kind of at the lowest point. If you just set it in here flat and this is still very wet, it can start to sag before it sets up. So what I'll do is I'll just put the pedestal in there, I'll kind of lean it up against it like that, so between the edge of the container and that pedestal, I can keep that at the lowest point. And then you let it sit for you know, 30 minutes or an hour or so, and let that acrylic cure. And you'll come back to do the final finishing once you cannot scratch that with your fingernail. So you try to scratch it, and it should be hard, hard, hard where you cannot scratch it and then you're ready to do the final finishing and polishing. Okay, so now that the acrylic is set, I cannot scratch this, it's hard. So to get this off the cast, you can take a lab knife, put it up under this headgear tube right here, and then put the blade up on the adjacent tooth, then you just pry up gently and it pops loose. Pop, and hopefully you don't bury the knife in your hand. And same thing on the other side. and then that comes off. Throw the cast away and then to get this out of there I just gently place it on the countertop and just tap it out like this. Eventually it'll come out. Another way you can do it is take um, the uh, take the lab dremel with an acrylic burr and you can gently, don't touch the band with it you can just kind of punch the hole on it. And normally, normally I would do it over the garbage can. But once uh, you have it like that, you can tap it out to get the stone out. So you do that to both of the bands to get all of the stone out. Once all the stone is out of the bands, then you take your lab knife and you clean off the super glue from the inside and the outside of the mesial and distal of those bands. And just keep a hold of the band so you don't distort it. And you have the lab knife like this in these fingers, and then you guide with your thumb. And just gently, and I keep a hold of the band with my left hand so that it doesn't distort, because sometimes it's pretty adherent. So you just scrape that off. Make sure it's out of the inside and the outside of the band on both sides. So last, you do the finishing on the acrylic. So if you made it nice and smooth like I showed you before, it should have minimal finishing to do at the end. The idea is you want to get this as thin as it can be, uh, but still covering the wire. Not paper thin, but you know, don't make it like a giant block of gum here. You want to make it minimal on the patient's mouth so it's comfortable for them. And then around the edges, you want to make sure nothing is sharp or pokey, and make sure that these edges taper down. You don't want a big ledge here that food and stuff can get caught on or their tongue will need to want to play with. So just trim these edges down with the uh, acrylic burr on the dental hand piece here. So I just grab both my four fingers, guide it with the thumb, and I just flex my hand like this to take it back and forth. And so you want to be pretty smooth with it so that you don't make a bunch of chatter marks. And just smooth out any of these little sharp edges here. And you don't push too hard. If you push really hard, it'll make uh, 
marks of the burr in the acrylic. If you're just really gentle and let the weight of the of the handpiece do most of the work, it ends up pretty smooth and you don't have to polish it that much at the end. You just trim down the edges really good. Up here, up under the wire, you kind of take that little sharp bit out of there. Try not to hit the wire with the with the uh, handpiece. And just get all of that stuff out from under there, just so you have a nice, clean, continuous border all the way around. So usually you can get a pretty good result with and nice and smooth with just this lab burr if you're very gentle. Um, but sometimes you want to get a little bit of extra polish on it.